but you just saw wasted dramatization of an assault in Mexico, which the insecurity grew even compared to the last year. And an approximate of 1,500 kidnappings occurred, which exceeds the official record of 1,317 cases reported. One of the factors that helps the increase in crime is the ineffectiveness of the judicial system in this country as to follow up cases and provide just punishment. Also, another major cause of rising in crime in Mexico is the lack of rehabilitation programs in prisons. For if when caught an offender, besides giving a punishment, it may an effort to change that person and convince him or her to live that way. And if you teach other traits that they could exercise to be released, perhaps the number of criminals today would not be so alarming. Cultural diversity has a major impact in the topic of insecurity, mostly because many people don't have the same opportunities than others and, for example, take a look at the profile of the criminal you just saw in our dramatization. The criminal was identified as Esteban Julio Ricardo Montoya de la Rosa Ramirez, also known as Batillo Loco 18. He lives in La Colonia Independencia, which is considered one of the most dangerous and insecure neighborhoods in Nuevo León. Esteban never lived with his parents, and the only family he had was his grandmother, which died when he was just nine years old. An assault in a business was his first crime, but because he was 12 years old, he was sentenced to liberty. Later on, Esteban returned to the streets and met Julio Jesus Hernández Radilla, also known as El Negro, which was the leader of a dangerous gang in Mexico. Introduced to the world of the drugs and murder and crime. Esteban became one of the most dangerous criminals in Mexico. Now that we know some of Esteban's information, let's check out the profile of the victim. The victim is identified as Carmen Elizabeth Juanita de Costa Brava Cortez. Carmen presents different characteristics as the ones from Esteban. Carmen lives with her parents and she is about to graduate from high school. She has never been involved in any drug situations or addictions. She always stays in a positive environment with her family and friends. And last of all, she has never been in trouble with authority. Now that we are done with the cultural diversity, let's watch a video of our reporter letting us know what people think about insecurity in Mexico. Help me figure out what people think about the insecurity. Let's make a quick interview. Excuse me, sir. No, no, no sorry, sorry. Are you thinking about it? Please, please. Excuse me, sir. Can you... No, no, no. Excuse me. Would you mind if I, if I do an interview to you? No. Well, real quick. Just two questions. What do you think about the insecurity? Uh, I think it's a very big problem here in this country because families are the most affected. Now that you've heard some opinions about the insecurity in Mexico, we would like to show you an interview we made to a girl that witnessed a crime scene. A ver, cuéntanos, ¿qué te pasó? Veníamos del centro comercial cuando vimos una camioneta prendida cerca de nuestra casa. Es, era negra y daba, estaba misteriosa, no sabíamos quiénes eran o qué hacían ahí parados. Decidimos ignorarlos y ca seguir caminando para llegar ya y abrir nuestra casa y entrar. Pero la camioneta le dio hasta que estaba atrás de nosotros y se bajaron hombres armados. Ellos nos agarraron y nos golpearon. Eh, querían robar 
teníamos todo lo que teníamos, pero no teníamos mucho. Vieron que teníamos unas llaves y hicieron que abrieran nuestra casa. Al entrar nos aventaron y nos golpearon un poco más después de habernos robado muchas cosas. Televisiones, joyerías, chucherías. Y después de que se fueron y nos dejaron tiradas en el piso, le hablamos a la policía. No nos dejaron atrapado. Muchas gracias.